The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is brought to you by Clinica Sierra Vista. Welcome back to the 17 News at Sunrise podcast, where we share your news on your schedule. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. And good morning here at 5 a.m. Thanks for waking up with us. I'm Maddie Jansen alongside Alex Fisher. I'm breaking overnight. A man is dead after a late night shooting in Lamont. The killing happened just a block away from another homicide last weekend. 17's Chris Burton has been working to gather details this morning. He joins us live in Lamont with the latest. Chris, good morning. Alex, Maddie, details are still limited at this time, but here's what we know at this hour. According to Kern County Sheriff's Office, a call came in around 1145 last night for a report of a shooting on School Street near Elmco Avenue. That's where deputies found a man who had been shot and killed. Now, this was the scene early this morning. Homicide detectives blocking off parts of School Street in their active investigation. At this time, KCSO says they have no information on a potential shooter, and we've yet to learn as well what exactly led up to this situation. Now, we did receive a call into our newsroom from a resident who described hearing several gunshots, saying, quote, it sounded like a war zone. And last night's slaying came just days after another deadly shooting, just a block away. KCSO says 36-year-old Reuben Anthony Aguilar Sr. was shot and killed on Primrose Avenue and Paradise Road Saturday evening. No arrests have been made in that case either. The name of the person who was killed here will be released at a later date. By our count, this brings the total number of homicides in Kern County this year to 113. Now, this is a developing story. We'll have more updates for you as the morning continues. Live in Lamont, Chris Burton, 17 News. All right, thank you, Chris. And now to a bizarre shooting that ended with a car barreling into a home in Northwest Bakersfield. Take a look. According to Bakersfield Police Department, it all started just after midnight at the In Shape on Coffee Road. Police say that's where a woman got into a fight with someone. And when she left, police say that person followed her. At one point, the other driver started shooting at the woman's car. As the woman sped away, police say she lost control and crashed into the front of this home on Olive Drive. She was not shot, but was taken to the hospital as a result of the crash. No description of the shooter and no arrests have been made. Education news now in California's impending school vaccine mandate has some parents thinking about alternatives to public education. A group called Californians for School Choice met yesterday at Canyon Hills Church in Bakersfield. They're hoping to gather enough signatures statewide to put the Education Freedom Act on the 2022 ballot. Parents who choose to have their children attend a private or religious school would get a yearly tuition credit of $14,000 per child, among other things. Anybody can qualify as long as it's an accredited school. It benefits homeschoolers, charter schools, private schools, um, Christian schools. Um, and so it's just a good opportunity to be able to um, just take the education back for us parents. The group says it needs 1.5 million signatures to get on next year's ballot. And your time now is 5.06. This morning, the FDA appears poised to not only approve booster shots for those vaccinated with the Moderna and Johnson & Johnson, but also clear the way for so-called mixing and matching boosters. As early as today, the FDA could authorize fully vaccinated Americans to receive a booster shot that's different from the brand they initially got. The government will not recommend one shot over the other, saying the public should stick to the vaccine originally received. But for 15 million jabbed with Johnson & Johnson, new research shows antibody levels rose 76-fold with a Moderna booster, compared to a minimal increase with another J&J &J shot. What we're finding out is that there are some cases where if you got one vaccine and then are boosted with a different vaccine, you actually get a better immune response, a higher, tighter immune response, a broader immune response against variants. Though the research on mixing and matching vaccines is limited, the practice is widely used overseas. The FDA's decision will be reviewed and likely approved by the CDC. And Kern Public Health announced another death yesterday due to COVID-19 and 313 new cases. Our death toll now stands at 1,616. 
Currently, 220 people are in local hospitals with most severe symptoms of COVID-19. And according to state data, there are 29 available ICU beds across the county. 17 News is your local election headquarters. And Lewis Gill, the former CEO of Bethany Services, announced yesterday he is running for California's 23rd Congressional District in 2022. As I walk through the community, I see things changing. I see a DC insider that's more focused on his own political ambition than serving the members of his community. Kevin McCarthy. Gill launched his campaign on the internet yesterday with a release, with a news release and his first campaign ad of this young campaign cycle. He's 52, a native of Porterville, with 21 years of experience at the helm of the Bakersfield Homeless Center and the Alliance Against Family Violence and Sexual Assault. Gill joins two other Democratic candidates who want to oust House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy from Congress. Meantime, Congressman McCarthy's campaign manager Liz Newman responded to our request for comment with this statement, which says in part, Kevin has a strong record fighting for and getting results on the issues that matter most to our communities. Water reform, supporting energy sector jobs, addressing valley fever. This is Kevin's home and he will always prioritize his neighbors. Kevin has personally intervened with the federal government on behalf of countless community members when their voice has not been heard. Recapping our top stories this Wednesday morning, a man is dead after a late night shooting in Lamont. Deputies say it happened around 1145 p.m. on School Street near Elmco Avenue. No arrests have been made. By our count, this is Kern County's 113th homicide this year. Just 30 minutes later, a shooting ended with a car crashing into a home in Northwest Bakersfield. Police say it started when a woman got into a fight at the in shape on Coffee Road, and when she left, she was followed. Police say the suspect started shooting at her, causing her to lose control and crash. She wasn't shot, but she was taken to the hospital as a result. Lewis Gill, the former CEO of Bethany Services, announced yesterday he's running for California's 23rd Congressional District in 2022. The Porterville native has 21 years of experience at the helm of the Bakersfield Homeless Center and the Alliance Against Family Violence and Sexual Assault. From our 17 follow-up file this morning and tomorrow will mark 10 months since two young boys from California City were first reported missing. There's still no sign of them. And now the mystery behind their disappearance is gaining national attention. Orin and Orson West, also known as classic and sincere to their biological family, were reported missing by their adoptive parents on December 21st last year. And now cable network News Nation, owned by our parent company, Nexstar, is dedicating a segment to Orrin and Orson West as part of its new series, Missing in America. Where are Orrin and Orson West? Bakersfield police have been on this case for months and insist it is not cold, but as of this week, the young brothers have been missing for 10 months. The backyard of this home in California City is said to be the last place where the two brothers were seen right before Christmas. Orrin and Orson would now be five and four years old. Their adoptive parents told police that the boys were playing out back on the afternoon of December 21st, but the brothers were gone when they went out to check on them later. Bakersfield police have taken over the investigation and admit they are keeping the majority of their evidence under wraps. The adoptive parents have since moved and are no longer talking, but others linked to the case have plenty to say. They might not remember me, but I remember them. And I also, like it don't matter how long it take, how hard it's gonna be, I won't give up, I will never give up. We have repeatedly uh, investigated all plausible events that occurred and the investigation is not done. We have not recovered the boys. You can watch Missing in America on News Nation tonight at 6 p.m. Meantime, a special prayer event will be held in honor of the West Boys tomorrow on that 10 month anniversary with attendees praying for the boys safe return. That is happening at 6 p.m. at the intersection of Potomac Avenue and South Owen Street just south of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Park in East Bakersfield. The Bakersfield Police Department is in charge of the investigation into the West Boys' disappearance. As always, anyone with information on the brothers is asked to call the secret witness line at 322-4040. Welcome back here at 547 in Education News. Valley Strong Credit Union made a major contribution to Bakersfield College, benefiting the school's energy initiative program. The credit union donated $2 million yesterday to the Bakersfield College Foundation in support 
of the college's work to provide job training for energy companies operating in Kern. In return, BC renamed its energy program to the Valley Strong Energy Institute. BC says Kern County has some of the most need for energy related jobs in the country to the variety of technologies at play here, such as oil, wind, solar and more. The city of Bakersfield is making things safer for bike riders across town. The city announced it is installing new green bike lanes at intersections along A Street. The $30,000 project is funded by the Transportation Development Act. City leaders say the new lanes will help bring better attention to bikers on the roadway. And speaking of biking, you can enjoy a family-friendly all-ages bike ride under the full moon tonight. The October full moon ride begins at 7 p.m. at Beach Park and follows along the Kern River Parkway Trail. Riders of all ages and skill levels are encouraged to come. Lights and helmets are strongly encouraged and bicyclists under age 18 are required to wear a helmet. Talk about a great night though for oh that. Oh my gosh, so beautiful. It was so bright driving in this morning. Oh yeah, I know because, the, the because that moon. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it should be a really fun, uh, really fun activity, especially because the temperatures are cooler. Oh yeah. I love our bike paths too. It will too. be gorgeous. Yeah. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is a production of KGET and Nexstar Media Group. For more on all of the headlines in today's show, head to KGET.com.